Joining me now, Jeremy Bash, former chief of staff at the CIA and Defense Department and a member of President Biden's Intelligence Advisory Board. It's been a bit. It's good to see you, Jeremy. I mean, long, not long ago, uh, Bibi Netanyahu was facing massive protests over his judicial plan, uh, criminal charges of fraud, bribery, breach of trust. Um, now we have a situation where, again, you have hostage families, supporters who are out there saying, we need a different path. Talk about where you see his standing today and how it's different one year after October 7. Well, Chris, I think with respect to the war in Gaza, certainly the families are right in calling for the return of their loved ones. Uh, just take a step back here. Uh, on October 7th of last year, Israel wasn't the only victim of this attack. There were people from 30 nations who were killed or taken hostages, including 46 Americans who were murdered that day, 12 who were taken hostage. Four were, of course, uh, released. Four were murdered in captivity. That was Hirsch. That was Etai. That was Judy. That was God. And there were four that we believe are still alive. Four Americans still alive in captivity in Gaza. Keith, Sagi, Idan, and Omer, whose parents you spoke to earlier. So this is the reason why the United States has been firmly backing Israel over this last year. And as I said, I think with respect to the war in Gaza, there's a view that the IDF has achieved a lot of objectives and that it may be time to uh, to get those. It is time, I should say, to get those hostages home and conclude a deal because Israel is actually under fire from four different directions, not just from Gaza, but also from Hezbollah and Lebanon, from the West Bank and from Iran, as we saw last Tuesday. And so the United States has been standing with, despite its differences with the BB government over many issues, it's been standing with the government of Israel because, of course, this isn't Israel's war of choice. The, the war could end tomorrow if Iran, if Hamas, if Hezbollah decide they do not want to attack Israel or the United States. Yeah, you know, uh, talking to Omer's parents, um, understandable level of frustration. They want leadership. And a year of war has strained the U.S.-Israel relationship. And I want to play some of what Vice President Harris said about this very important alliance. Do we have a, a, a real close ally in Prime Minister Netanyahu? I think, with all due respect, the better question is, do we have an important alliance between the American people and the Israeli people? And the answer... To that question is yes. But of course, the Israeli people are not making a decision about how to prosecute this war. And her comments, or some might say lack of direct answer, came after President Biden said on Friday he doesn't know if Benjamin Netanyahu is trying to influence the U.S. election in November um, and that he should remember how much Biden has helped him. Um, I wonder what you think the impact of our election is on what's happening, if anything, and where that relationship really stands. Look, Chris, uh, I think actually Vice President Harris's answer was spot on because across every administration, Democratic, Republican, across labor governments, Likud governments, there's been a strong alliance between the Israeli government and the U.S. government. This goes back to 1948 to Harry Truman and David Ben-Gurion. So this is not tethered to a single leader or a certain personnel dynamic. And actually, I, I quibble a little bit with the premise of your question, which is that the U.S.-Israel relationship has been strained over the past year. I would argue the opposite. It's actually grown much closer. You've got weekly calls between Yoav Gallant, the defense minister of Israel, and our Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin. You've got regular interactions between the National Security Council and the Israeli government uh, decision-making bodies. You've got regular engagement between our State Department and Israel. You've got more congressional delegations and visitors going back and forth between Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, Washington, and so forth than you've had in any previous year. And the, if and, if and, I can, but, though, Jeremy, nobody's questioning the outreach, the efforts for diplomacy. No, but there's that alignment. There's strategic alignment. And what I'm here, when we put carrier strike Where groups are the results? In, in the Red Sea. Tell me what do you see as the I, results I will tell of you, that. Yeah. I will tell you the results. The U.S. has engaged in military activity to back up our diplomacy. When Iranian surrogates and proxies attacked our troops and our bases, killed three U.S. service members, 
We use precise military force against Iranian surrogates and proxies. When Israel needed weaponry to go after Hezbollah, we provided that weaponry. When Israel needed Iron Dome to uh, to shoot down incoming ballistic missiles, that's the United States, the United States Congress, the American taxpayer and our government that has provided that. There is incredible alignment. I mean, you're going to find areas of disagreement between allies on this tactic or that matter. But there is broad strategic alignment between the United States and Israel. And I, I think this narrative that somehow the relationship is frayed or it's strained, I think it's fundamentally, it's factually inaccurate. And, and actually, I think it undermines, uh, it undermines a, a key U.S. objective in the Middle East, which is we're trying to promote a durable peace and secure uh, dynamic between Israel and all of its neighbors, including Saudi Arabia, including its Gulf Arab countries, to build on the peace treaties with Jordan and Egypt. That's what the U.S.'s goal is. And the, uh, the people who have undermined that, who have frayed that, are Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas. But let's talk about the internal politics, if we can, for just a second. Last hour, uh, we heard J.D. Vance attacking the Biden-Harris administration for not doing enough to bring the hostages home. Let me play that. It is disgraceful that we have an American president and vice president who haven't done a thing. Vice President Harris, our message is bring them home. Use your authority to help bring them home. I think for some people that was striking, given the location that it was at on a day that is meant to commemorate. But I just want want your reaction to what you heard the vice presidential candidate say. Well, first of all, I fundamentally disagree that the president and the vice president haven't done a darn thing to bring the hostages home. They have worked around the clock. They've met with the hostage families. They're engaged on a regular basis with the Qataris, the Egyptians, uh, the, the Emiratis, the Saudis, the Turkish uh, mediators to try to put pressure on Sinwar. And of course, they're talking to Israel every single day. Now, of course, no one's going to rest until all of the hostages are home and reunited with their loved ones. But I think that's just a partisan political attack. And I also think, you know, as long as we're talking about records here, Donald Trump was president for four years. And look at what he did in the face of Iranian aggression. When Iran shot down an American aircraft, an unmanned aircraft in international airspace in June 2019, Donald Trump sent a tweet and Iran was emboldened. And then when Iran actually fired rockets and missiles at our troops, Donald Trump said that tra traumatic brain injury that you suffered, those injuries of a, more than 100 service members, those are just headaches. And he doubled down on that last week. His foolishness, his weakness on Iran is well understood by people in the region. And you know what? They don't fundamentally respect that weakness and that foolishness. And I think the United States, under President Biden's leadership, under Vice President Harris's leadership, has been incredibly strong in standing with our allies, standing against terrorism, defending Israel in a coalition in April and again last Tuesday. I think uh, I think this is a, a very strong record. and I don't think this is the right day for partisan political attacks. Jeremy Bash, it's good to see you again. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.